Okay, so uh, in this video we're going to prove the following proposition. So there are infinitely many primes of the form 4n plus 3 for n uh, and in, in the natural numbers. So the proof of this uh, can serve as a model for the proof of several different um, similar results like there are infinitely many primes of the form uh, 6n plus 5 for instance. Okay, good. So uh, let's get into the proof. So uh, we're going to do this by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that there are only finitely many primes of this form. So let's suppose there are finitely many such primes. And so let's give them a name. So let's say P0 is the first one. And we actually know what P0 is. Let's say it's 3, assuming we're going from smallest to biggest. But even if we're not, we can set P0 equal to 3. And then we have P1 up to PR. So here we have R plus 1 different prime numbers. So we're assuming that there are um, R plus 1 such prime numbers. Good. Now the next thing we want to do is consider the following number. So consider n, which is equal to 4 times p1 to pr plus 3. So obviously, this number is of this form. Whether or not it's prime is yet to be determined. So, um, and we won't actually show that it's prime. We'll show that it has a prime divisor, which is not of this form. Okay, good. So, now let's notice that so notice that n is odd. So that's obvious. It's um, of the form 4 times a number plus 3. So that's an odd number. So its prime factorization must be made uh, exclusively of odd numbers. So 2 is not part of its prime factorization. In other words, its prime factorization is made of primes of the form 4n plus 1 and 4n plus 3. Okay, good. So now, uh, what we want to claim is at least one of those primes is of the form 4n plus 3. So let's write that as kind of a subclaim within the proof. So at least one of these primes is of the form 4n plus 3. Good. And so how we'll do that is a kind of a proof by contradiction within this big proof. So here we'll have a little proof right here. So by way of contradiction, um, suppose all of its primes are 4n plus 1 type. So let's write it like that, 4n plus 1 type. Good. Um, but then notice the following, that if you take 4n plus 1 times 4m plus 1, so say we've got two primes of that form, or really two numbers of that form, notice that what we're going to get is 4 times the product 4mn plus m plus n plus 1. So in other words, numbers of the form 4n plus 1 are closed under multiplication. So that means we'll never get a number of the form uh, 4n plus 3 using only numbers of the form 4n plus 1, which means uh, this is a contradiction to this um, original claim, or sorry, from this first line of this proof, so this claim is true. 
So I won't write all that down in words, but I'll just put a little contradiction there to say that we have proven this claim. In other words, at least one of these primes is of the form 4n plus 3. Okay, good. So now uh, I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to the rest of the proof. Okay, so now we'll finish off this proof. So let's just recall that we said that all primes of this form were uh, on the list P0, which is 3, P1, up to PR, and we were considering this number N, which equals 4 times P1 up to PR plus 3. Good. And so all primes of the form 4n plus 3 were on this list. And then we also showed that there is a prime in the factorization of n, which is of this type. So let's recall that. So one of the primes in the factorization of n is of the type 4n plus 3. So in other words, it's one of these. So one of p0 p1 up to pr divides n. So I've just rewritten that in a more useful um, way for our needs. Good. So let's look at case number one. So let's say p0, which equals 3, divides n. Good. But now, notice that if 3 divides n, then since 3 also divides 3, that tells you that 3 divides n minus 3. So this means 3 divides n minus 3. But notice that n minus 3 is 4, p1 up to pr. Good. So that means 3 divides 4 or... 3 divides pi for some i between 1 and r. Good. And both of those are impossible. Obviously, 3 doesn't divide 4. And since all of these primes are different, and they're primes, so they have no divisors other than themselves and 1, so uh, that makes this statement as well impossible. OK, good. So now uh, we'll look at case 2. And that is pi divides n for some i uh, bigger than or equal to r. Sorry, for some i between 1 and r, so not including 0. Good. So now we'll do a similar trick. So this means pi divides n minus 4 p1 up to pr. Good. So we left p0 out of this product right here, so we could uh, use the fact that 3 divides this 3. And now, um, <clears throat> since pi is part of this product, we'll use the fact that pi divides n and pi divides this part to tell us that pi divides 3. Right? But that tells us that pi equals 3 or pi equals 1, just by the definition of a prime number and its divisors. But we already know that pi cannot be either of those and be um, on our list, because all of these are different from, from 3, and 1 is not a prime. So this is also a contradiction, and this finishes our proof. So in other words, there are infinitely many primes of this form.